You're listening to Sarah Hagen backstage with interviews and insights from years inside the music industry. Join Sarah as she talks with masters of their crafts, finding out what makes them tick both inside and outside of the music business. Welcome to Sarah Hagen backstage. My guest today, Eric Harland, is an incredibly creative jazz drummer who leads his own group and plays with an amazing array of superstar musicians, including Charles Lloyd, Dave Holland, Joshua Redman, McCoy Tyner, Kurt Rosenwinkel, Chris Potter, Terrence Blanchard, and many, many more. Eric has released his own music, played on many Grammy-nominated albums, owns a recording studio in New York City, and is just a wonderful, insightful human being. Today, we will talk about creativity, growth, and finding the beauty in the process of looking inward and improvising in life. Eric tells us what he has been up to the last couple of years and what he has on the horizon. So come along with me as I catch up with Eric Harland. Just swim. Eric, welcome to the podcast. Hey, what's going on, Sarah? How you doing? Oh my gosh, I'm great. How are you doing? Cool. Uh, I can't complain. I, I guess we all could complain, but that's that's the beauty is uh, restricting the complaints. Uh, you know, to, to right. maintain a we, sense of oneness. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We try All to that. look at the positive. Try, try, try to, to find positive. find the silver lining in it, right? <laughs> Definitely try to find the silver lining in it. Love it, love it, love it. Absolutely. How have you been? Oh my god, I'm great. I'm so so great. Busy, busy, and you know, just um trying to uh, stay stay sane in this environment as we indeed, indeed. you know it seems indeed. like we're we're um kind of like seeing a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel and i i i say that yeah. i knock on some wood here um Absolutely. because <laughs> because i feel like we felt like this before but it does feel different i don't know yeah. how you're feeling about that oh yeah it feels very different uh yet similar uh it's just more exposed mm. and um but that's cool. You know what I mean? Like we knew sometimes, yeah, Hey, look, they've been making catastrophic, uh, you know, Armageddon movies for a long time for a reason. Right. And, um, I think all of us in humanity has just as human beings, we watched those films and we were like, Ooh, that'd be so terrible. That's how oh like, yeah. Gladly <laughs> it's not <laughs> on the level as the films, but, um, it is disturbing in the way that we have to envision this right now. And, um, I think we just wasn't as planned for it as we thought. So it's a it's a learning curve. It's a learning lesson. Mm -hmm. And it's a time for us to figure out what this is uh, because it's happened once before. It's going to happen again. Right. And, um, and and now it's just our time. You know, when we grew up, we, we you know, we heard the lessons. We read the, the history books and we were like, oh, man, that'd be terrible. Oh, God. right. Right. So, you know, in the future, they're going to read the history books about this time and, and um, so, yeah, things like that. It's it's interesting. Yeah, and didn't it seem didn't it seem like so far removed from reality in a way? You know, it was like that happened so far back. You know, when you read about something like this happen, you know, you read about a pandemic or you watch those movies and you think like, oh well, you know, there's a slight chance that something like that could happen, but it seems so remote. Yeah. Um, I think now I think we're all changed in that aspect. Things seem scary. Things seem a little more possible, I guess. But it also makes us um, really appreciate life absolutely. and hugs and yeah. <laughs> friends you know, and absolutely, you absolutely. know, all of that so much more. Yeah, the importance of things that had been long forgotten. You know, just mm. you know, the beauty of a flower in the field. Uh, before was just you know. It was just something out there and you know it's like oh let me get a let me get a picture for my social media but mm -hmm. now it's more like a, a substantial essence of life something that has survived time and time again because of mm -hmm. the seed that was planted right so right you know now we get a chance to look at ourselves in the same way like we're part of a uh a higher awareness of you know creation you know oh it depends on what people different people think that's sometimes i don't go there but it's one of those ideas that in my mind i like to um to wander into because it's very interesting you know the thought of where we come from and where we go to mm -hmm. and i feel like when 
times like today where life slows everything down, I feel like a lot of us panic because we don't take the time to process the information of what being here or just being in general really is. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, and that's something that just, you know, obviously it makes the world go round. So it's, if it's making the world go round, maybe it's something that we should factor in as maybe a little bit more important than mm -hmm. the day-to-day -day things that we think are more important. But it's, it's hard because we've built such a society that's, that's based on the day to day. And, and that's also mm -hmm. important. So there's, there's no judgment. It's just, we're just trying to figure it out. It's just another curve ball and right. you got to figure out how to, how to get the right swing, you know? Yes. You know, <laughs> yes. Like, ah, yeah. know. <laughs> right. But I, I think you make such a great point because we do in our, you know, two years ago, life was moving so fast. We were all moving so fast. And, um, for Absolutely. a lot of us, that mm -hmm. changed drastically in a minute. You know, yeah. um, I have friends who work in healthcare and in other industries where th things even went faster for them. They were moving faster than ever through the whole pandemic. Um, and you know, all, all the, uh, the, um, thanks to everyone who in healthcare through this time, of course. Um, but yeah, for, for, right. But for us on the other, other side of things, our, um, our industry came to a sudden halt and it was, uh, for a lot of people who were very busy and traveled a lot and um, saw people a lot and were very social um, yeah. to suddenly have all of that stop. It was definitely like a uh, a mind sh mindset shift, I guess. Yes. And so, Absolutely. you know, um, to have time to think about the fragility of life and 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 the industry and all of those things, I think, was um was a scary thing, but, but really, really important and, and changed kind of the course of a lot of lives, you know, of, of the friends that I know, um, and their careers. So, absolutely. so it's been an interesting time, but I, you know, we talked a little bit before I pressed record and, <laughs> and, um, you know, Sounds just, good. yeah, just about, um, about this time frame and how it has been, um, as you, as you put it really well, you improvise for a living, right? That's yeah. what you do. You're yeah. so fantastic and known for it. And so this was a chance to improvise in life. Yeah. The, the observation of being able to just continue the continual learning process. And, um, it was just another song and, and I hate to put it as blase as that, but it, it was another tune. It was just more of a tragic tune. So a lot of sorrow and a lot of heartfelt and uh, cause I know a lot of people lost a lot of loved ones, mm -hmm. you know, I, I lost some loved ones in my family as well. Um, but it's the thing about it is um, it's back to what we were saying before it's, it's the learning experience and the vulnerability that, Oh, okay. Uh, life wasn't what that was before. Cause you know, a lot of times we think society is life. And society is just a form of life, mm -hmm. but there is another tier of what life is. And and I feel like as the more, as we get older or as whatever, as we continue to live, I feel like we'll start to see a multitude of, of, of variations of what life really is because it's a totality of everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of, it's almost like you move from one room to the next room, or then you, you move into another room or then you move into this observation. And, and that's that's the beauty and but at the same time it, you can't negate the suffering of everything that has gone on and and i, I feel like we're tr still trying to figure that out um mm -hmm. but you know if you bring it back to music which has always been a you know a really great divine teacher for me is that you see that in music it, it's without the casualties right mm. it's just, it's just, sometimes you don't really show up to play and and, and some you know he, she, them, or they choose not to play. And, and then you have to, you have to honor that. You have to honor that emotional response or that logical response for, you know, the mental health prospect or observation that, oh, okay, cool. This is not something that you're feeling in this moment. Uh, you know, maybe we move to something else. And, and then you really start to see where your community lies. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not an advocate for, 
you know, separation or isolation. But sometimes, you know, you have to find out what that is. And I, and I feel like what this COVID crisis or the pandemic has presented is a different opportunity mm -hmm. for people to take a little bit more time to just really see where they were, you know, and the idea where they felt like they were going and just process what's happening in the moment and then rearrange or not rearrange, just maybe just the process alone has to be enough, right? Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of times we think the process is the process. We tend to think process equal equals progress, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily true. The process could just be progress or it could also be regress. Like it doesn't matter. It's like because we live in a society that thinks because you're progressive, you're evolving and growing, but you can also regress and you can still be evolving and growing. It just depends on who you are and what things mean to you and how attached are you to what that is, you know, and where you see yourself being and, and what that means in the livelihood of, of your, of your life, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or your music, you know, I can say life, but it's music. It's the same thing. You're trying, right. You know, Right, right, exactly. You and you posted something not so long ago along these lines about um, self discovery, and it was it was beautiful. It was a quote, um, you know, step into the fire of self discovery. Oh, and it was yes. yeah. I I it was it was really beautiful, and it and it I feel like it's exactly what you're talking about right now. It was step into the fire of self discovery. The fire will not burn you. It will only burn what you are not. Absolutely. And it's just like, it's, I feel like this time period, as difficult as it was to go through, um, has been a period of self discovery for so many people. So, yeah. I you mean, know, you, you, and yeah. And, and I, and I think it's um, being heard in music. I mean, I'm hearing so much music that's come yeah. out of this time period that's so uh, deep and different. Uh -huh. You know, and have you found that in your own music? Yeah, the same. Um, you know, I feel like the Roaring Twenties were the Roaring Twenties for a reason in the 1920s. So the fact mm -hmm. that we're in the 20s again, I feel like it's the same thing. It's, it's, it's like when the pressures of life, you know, heat up a bit and you can't really plan, you know, your marketing strategy or what it is that mm -hmm. you would like to do. It's like it brings out a different component of what's really true for yourself and that truth begins to speak out in the music that's created so you know it can become either celebratory it can become more you know intrinsic it, it just depends on where you feel that speaks for you like like you said it's it's a, it's a chance to go inside and see what's inside and allow that to emerge outside mm -hmm. so I, you know I, I feel like we're here again and we get a chance to experience this and the music that has been coming up, I, I'm, I'm seeing like before the pandemic, you know, we were definitely in the race of, okay, cool. I have this set up and I know this is going to hit based on everything else I've seen before. Like we, we were planning based on the marketplace. Right. Mm -hmm. And as long as the marketplace gave us um, the ingredients as, as well as the, the plan of success, everybody was planning according to the same uh, base model that had been given. But now when that model went away, everyone had to start improvising again. It was just like, we don't even know. And that's when I feel like you become even more creative is because you're not basing it on something that you've seen. You're starting to ask yourself the the deeper questions or just, you just starting to ask yourself a question. They don't have to be deep. Mm -hmm. uh, just, okay, well, what should I do now? I mean, right. That, that simple question just adds so much. Oh my God. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And I think of you as such a creative, innovative player, you know, in <laughs> just in general. So I love that, you know, it's um, that that's your perspective on things as well. And, and, you know, bringing that inside out and showing showing the world and I, yeah these conversations that i've been having with drummers i feel like that it really is a common theme that yeah. it's 
provided a time for creative exploration in so in so many aspects, whether it's, you know, Otis Brown going to the the museums and and seeing art and being inspired by that or yeah, absolutely. you know, exploring other other types of music. And in the time period in the during the pandemic, you actually did some really like new and interesting things, one being um creating the the music venue for the Astorian in Houston. Yeah. Which looked super cool. Yeah, that was great. Um I I, I got concerned that um I don't know that live music was was fading away. And um it was one of those things I had to ask myself. I was like, oh man. Um is if is live music leaving? And you know right. it's one of those things it's it's kind of like metaphysics in a way um uh, it's enough to have the dream and then just uh you know i don't know i i don't know how people believe in that form of manifestation but that's the way it, it presented itself for myself uh i really just thought on it it wasn't something i didn't know the owner for the historian uh it's primarily been a wedding hub mm -hmm. and uh it's such a great and wonderful venue and then i've always wanted to bring just music you know, not to say that music is not in Houston, but I realized that a lot of us that went to the high school performing arts, uh, we left the city and mm -hmm. there's still some great players that are down there. But I just wasn't sure of the music scene that was still existing in Houston. And um, and I'm, I've been so used to the music scene that's been in New York where, mm -hmm. you know, you can go to New Blue and, and play one night. You can go to the Vanguard and play a week. You can go to Blue Note. Uh, you can go to Smalls. You can go to Mesro. Uh, I mean, you can go to City Winery. It's like it's so many venues right. that offer so much just on that scale. And then you can go to the larger scale, which, you know, it, it's just New York. Everything is here. Right. Um, so for me, I was I was like, man, it would be so nice. And I, I guess what really prompted it was the idea in my mind, not the idea, but the actuality that one of my favorite jazz being used in Houston clothes, which was called Saison's. Mm -hmm. And Cezanne's was a place that even when we were in high school or after high school, we could come back on vacation and you could set up a gig and you could just play trio quartet and people would come out very intimate, small room, maybe held, I don't know, 50, 60 people. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a nice place to grow and just, you know, just to play music so that you could just get used to one playing in public, uh, you know, being around your friends, everybody could hang out and they, it, something about that was nurturing so that you knew that you were at least on a path, whether it's mm -hmm. right or wrong, like you were on the path of, of making music and getting, getting over the jitters of playing in public and all this kind of stuff. Um, so that was a beautiful thing. And so when they had, when they had to close during the pandemic, I was like, man, this is, you know, we got to figure out some other places to play because man, you know, where are people going to play? Yeah. It's one thing to introduce something on your Instagram page or your, you know, your Facebook and show people what you're doing at home. But that, you know, in in a way, that's still a safe zone. It doesn't invite that that pulls people to you, but it, sure. it doesn't provide like a, a place where people can share the experience together. And I feel like music is a shared space, you mm -hmm. know, especially when it's heard live. Because, you know, you have the band that's playing and the pressures of what they feel in presenting a, a wonderful show and, and musical content and, you know, how much of the vulnerability they're willing to reveal of themselves. But then the audience, too, of like, OK, this is something that we need. Otherwise, they wouldn't show up. They come out. Mm -hmm. and like, oh, my God, mm -hmm. like we feel this and this is so beautiful. And or, or not, you know, some people judge it. Like, oh, I can do that better. But, you know, that's cool. That's all. That's all. You know, it's all in there. <laughs> Um, so the historian came out of that. It came out of that. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, uh, he used to do a lot of work. Uh, he's part of like the Wonder uh, Corporation. They're a company that's been involved in a fashion show. His name is uh, Kerry uh, Chaplin. And mm -hmm. uh, they've done a bunch of different things with Vivian Tan, which, in you know, like the, the fashion scene. And and right. so he he knew the, the owner uh the historian this guy named romaine oh man i have to think about romaine's last name but um i i, I can't say it i don't want to butcher nobody <laughs> but uh but romaine is, is is a really great guy and um i got a chance through carrie to get a chance to know him 
And uh, we talked about a way to bring music back to Houston and um, how we could put our heads together. And it's just how can we get some, you know, as honest as that, I would just, you know, start yeah. a series and see how everybody's feeling. And, you know, you know, how it is. it's just it's mm-hmm. like every adventure. Right. You just. Right. The connections happen and it exactly. go from there. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Get on the Zoom call. You know, like, ah, yeah. Cool. Nice to be. <laughs> man, cool. <laughs> I love that. That's so, so great, though. I mean, just and one of the things I wanted to talk to you about actually was Houston, because you you went to high school, the performing performing arts high school. um, And it's like I I just it's like Rochester, New York, like something happens in Rochester, New York that creates like really great drummers and something happens in Houston. Oh, man. it's amazing. Like yeah. the, you know, the, the musicians that come out of there are incredible. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, I think we challenge each other. Um, mm-hmm. the dramas, we stay on top of each other all the time. Like I'm, I'm constantly texting. Yeah. Well, first of all, me and Chris Dave grew up together. He's, he's mm-hmm. my cousin and, uh, we're actually the same birthday. He's just four years older than me. Even wow. though he looks about five years younger than me. Um, <laughs> But uh, we would just listen to music all day and we would just play video games and and then we would challenge each other by just, you know, doing a whole bunch of push ups and then trying to see who could play the fastest, and, <laughs> you know, all this just weird stuff that I mean, it wasn't weird to us at the time because we were just having fun. Yeah. And um, that became our routine discipline. But, you know, we were all brought together because we had the same drum instructor, which is Craig Green. Craig Green is a phenomenal teacher. And we call him like the Buddha of drums because mm-hmm. it was a very unconventional approach to teaching you how to play the drums. He understood that it wasn't, you know, coming to him at a young age, you just wasn't going to get the the verbiage uh, or the dialect of the things that he was trying to explain. Mm-hmm. So he had to use, you know, physical mechanics, right? And I like talking about this because, you know, as a young drummer, you know, I was a product of, you know, MTV and watching all these 80s rock drummers. Yes. And, you know, hands was up, you know, it was mm-hmm. like nothing was here. It was just like, you know. Oh, yeah. Big here. movements. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shirts off. Let's go. You know, <laughs> Some was way over here and everybody's like, oh, my goodness, let's go. Yeah. And uh, and I love it. You know, my mom, you know, I was always trying to wear, you know, cut off T-shirts to school, and look hip. <laughs> You know, little belt around. You know, I was, you know, I was trying to be a, like a drum superhero. I didn't know what that was, you know. but my mom was like, "No, sir, you're gonna have to put on some yeah. co- correct clothing mm-hmm. <laughs> to represent." Yes. But um, but you know, so when I went and studied with him, he saw that when I I, I would came I would come and do lessons with him, and he was like, "Keep the same energy, but just don't hit the stick." So he would hold the stick up and say, that, "You know, the stick was here." Mm-hmm. And uh, if I wanted to go up, he was like, just don't hit the stick. So I had to m- see what the power of still getting the same sound out of the drums mm-hmm. just without going way up here. Because he was like, if you want to do that, it's, it's cool to do that and it can be theatrical. But just know that you won't have to do that. Mm-hmm. Like you can still mm-hmm. get the same sound because you never know. Everything is day to day. And if, if, if there is a day you're tired, that arm, you know. You say you know right. after you got your booster shot, right? Yes, I, right. I don't know that arm wants to go up. You know, <laughs> you're just like, Ugh. say, bros, can we keep it down up in here? But, <laughs> but if you get the same power, you're like, oh man, cool. Everything can still be here, mm-hmm. and then you can finesse around that, and and then it's it's okay. Like it's it's cool. It was just a, it's, it, it was a different way, but it, as you can see in all of us, there's a very controlled way of still getting speed, power. But then also the melody, because uh, he was part of the uh, Thunders, you know, Thunder and Soul documentary that was uh, narrated by Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx is also oh, from wow. Texas. Yeah. And uh, Thunder and Soul was about the Cashmere Garden jazz band, because in the 70s, they were pretty much one of the most influential jazz bands, you know, ever, I, I, you know, arguably ever, you know. Right, I mean, right. <laughs> no, you know. Don't get at me on that, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and it, it made such a distinct sound, and so he was under the direction of 
the guy that we used to study with as well in our summer jazz workshop, which was Conrad Johnson, mm. who we used to call prof. Mm -hmm. And um, when we were kids, like 12, 13, he was the one that had, had us in the summer jazz workshop teaching us jazz standards so that, you know, we would have a basis of understanding form and, and music and the blues and, and chord changes, you know, that that was something that really helped because by the time we got to high school, we had such an awareness of melody, chord changes, uh, form structure, mm -hmm. uh, the way to shape around a the theme. Like these are things that you don't really think that are important. But then when you realize it, you're like, oh, man, those things were absolutely important because now I understand the structure of a tune. So mm -hmm. when you want to honor the song, otherwise you're just always playing the same thing all the time. You're not using your creativity, which we were talking about now mm -hmm. in the pandemic, to to offer that creativity to a structure of a song that's there and allow to see who you are creative within the structure of the song that's being presented. So, you know, right. that's music, man. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I'm I'm so happy that that environment exists and oh, and existed right. and existed then um, when when you all were there. Um, and Chris Chris's name keeps coming up in these conversations. I'm gonna have to get him on here too to to talk with him. And um, I just I think of him as a being so. He he's one of those artists that. Um, is always pushing the boundaries of like what what music is and what creativity is. I think of hi him as like thinking on a different level when it comes to drumming. I I just like you really. Um, one of the things that I saw Chris Dave do was uh, a performance at Montreal Drum Fest. Montreal Drum Fest, I think it was years back, and I I heard him playing from backstage. And I was like, what am I hearing right now? Like, this is just, I, ha I have to go yes. out and see what's happening. Yeah. Um, and that was the first time I saw him play live and just yeah. was like, just blown away with how unique and yep. innovative, you know, his, his playing was. Um, but yeah, so that's, it's just incredibly interesting to me, but I love that you went back to Houston and, and got that venue moving and things do happen like that. Like the, you know, you get on a zoom call with someone and things start moving. And um, if you take the initiative like that, that, that's, that's the kind of thing that can happen. I love it. Yeah. You never know. You never know. Um, and you never know how things show up. Um, and it, you know, you can be available for it. You know, I like how people say that all the time. It's just like, you know, you never know what's going to show up. So always, you know, prepare and be ready. So when the time is right, Mm -hmm. to engage into it but yes. you know also you know maybe you're not prepared but if you're willing to embrace the moment and not run from it mm -hmm. and and be willing to start over absolutely right? yeah, yeah. You, it's, it's so easy to know what you're good at and be like mm -hmm. well i only want to stay there because i have a, a certain persona and a, a certain way that i feel comfortable and i know how to pretty much shape from that thing but if you are the, the thing about that is that if you already know how to do it in that realm, all you got to do is relearn in a different uh, according to a different situation. It, it You know, like for me, I could say, well, I know how to play drums well, mm -hmm. but I don't know how to use the, the camera and the mechanics or engineer or something like that. Well, right. Yes. Well, the same process it took to learn the drums is the same process it takes to learn something else. Right. It's just Absolutely. the learning. Yeah. You know, the learning experience, you know. Yeah. Learning how to use, you know, the content that we're doing right now. I, I feel like if you're a person that's willing to learn and you're not absorbed with what you've known before, mm -hmm. you'll continue to grow. And no matter what's thrown at you, you you'll be OK. You know? Yeah, I, I think so many people who are listening to this episode right now are feeling that heavy, like <laughs> that just oh, wow. has to resonate with so many people. Um, yeah. it resonates with me personally. Um, oh. you know, I just, um, I feel like that's such an important lesson to learn. Um, being able to adjust and grow and embrace change. I think so many in our industry 
have gone through that in so many aspects, being home, learning how to use camera equipment. You have a great setup there where you have a couple different angles. You can teach, yeah. you can, you know, you can do whatever you want from there, but Hey, we so out we, here, you know. Right there, you, you gotta, go. Got to make it work either way you yes. can. You know, it's everything is just keep moving around. Absolutely, and if yeah. you told me two years ago that I would be here, you know, in my my home studio doing uh, doing this and and working from here and working with these amazing companies that I've had a chance to to work with, I would never have believed it. And it's just. You know, I, I feel like that was a whole different life back then. I'm so grateful um, yeah. for that time period. And I'm so grateful for this as well. And I think, uh, you know, it's just it's it's growth. It, that's what it is. And feels good to yeah. grow sometimes. So, yeah, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's, I mean, it's always good to grow. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it just doesn't feel good. But it's you no. know, <laughs> you're like, really? Yeah. You know, some like, and sometimes you're forced to grow and it's absolutely. It is, man, it, it can be a, a, you know, it can, it can be a tough process, but um, once you get there, once you get to the next step, I think you can look back and, and be grateful for, for what was tough still. Absolutely. You know? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Once you get there. Once you get there, once you get, <laughs> once you get to, once you get somewhere. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right. Just somewhere stable. You're just like, ooh, two feet right. on the ground. You can look back Oof. and say, okay, I made it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know what? And I always say too, like, um, I think it's one thing that's important that always sticks with me is doing something that is out of your comfort zone. That's always growth, you know, because yes. you come out on the other side of something that you're uncomfortable with or nervous about or scared of or you know, have always thought was impossible, realizing that you made it through, it was possible. And then how many other yeah. things are possible now? Right. So absolutely. So yeah. that's a, it's always a good lesson. Yeah, indeed. For sure. And um, so other things, so, so we talked about Houston um, and the historian, but you have been playing and um, one of the people you mentioned recently in a post was Amy Schumer that you were that you were playing with and i have to ask about that oh yeah um so i got called a good friend of mine uh ray angry great pianist keyboardist uh also plays with the roots mm -hmm. um you know he's been doing his whole producer monday series down at new blue and um man he just hit me up one day he was like man i'm, I'm working on the music for this new amy schumer series that's coming out in march it's called the life of beth mm -hmm. and um and i was like Amy Schumer? Oh, I'm there. Like that's yeah. that's that's like my sister for real. So um, <laughs> you know, I just love her sense of humor and mm -hmm. you know, uh I also love her intellect and her compassion. Uh, we've had some really great conversations. Um, you know, they can be surface, but they can also be very deep. Like she's just she's witty, she's funny, but she's also understanding and um and and available, strangely. Like sometimes. A lot of separate, it just depends. I feel like everybody's available. It just depends on the level in which they trust you, right? Sure. Yeah. And um, when you're in her environment, like the trust factor is just automatic. She's like, oh, okay, cool. She can, it's just a feeling, it's a mutual thing. And you're like, oh, cool. And um, right. so, yeah, yeah, we, we went to Electric Lady and, um, you know, they had the music, you know, pretty much worked out. So we, we just pretty much just had to play the content and really try to figure it out from, uh, you know, from scene to scene, making sure that we could capture the actual moment that they were mm -hmm. looking for, that she was looking for, that the directors were looking for. And that was great. Uh, and I, you know, fortunate for me, I have a lot of experience in that because I worked on a lot of Spike Lee films with Terrence Blanchard. So, right. you know, because sometimes those can become stressful because as, as an artist, you want to maintain a certain level of creativity and, um, you know, uniqueness. But mm -hmm. in those situations, it's just it can be unique, but it has to fit what was already been pre pre planned or mm -hmm. pre recorded in such a way. And so, you know, understanding that allowed for those sessions to to run smoothly, and those things were, were really I mean, they were just so much fun. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's coming out in March. Uh, I want to say like maybe around the second week of March. I think it's supposed to be released like around March seventeenth or something like that. But um, 
great series. Uh, can't wait for everybody to watch it. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a lot of great content, a lot of great music. But uh, shout out again to Ray Angry. Y'all showing him some love. He's out there doing his thing and, um, you know, and, and, and bringing the brothers with him, uh, the homies with him. I don't want to just. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Indeed, no, that's indeed. that's so great. We'll have to look for that for sure. Absolutely, um, please do. And I love that's that's so cool. And I did um I did know that you had done some some film, um some music for films. I love I love that. Um, I remember talking with you about that way back. Um, about sounds too, because you were, uh, your setup. You know, you had you were making sure that you had the right setup. I think at the time for for what you were doing. Absolutely. Um, that's important. And, you know, and speaking of your setup, too, I just have to mention this in the context of this whole conversation about creativity. In my time at Zildjian in Artist Relations, I received so many phone calls and emails and text messages and social oh. media messages about your hi hats because oh, yeah. you <laughs> you had this incredibly innovative Hi hat set up. Oh yeah. In the beginning, yes. I got to put, put the holes in the hat. Yeah. I was like, oh, you man. did. You did. I know. And later, in later years, when we came out with the uh, K Custom Special Drive line, made uh -huh. sure that there was a hi hat top that ho had holes in it. That that was an option. Um, yeah. But you paired a 16 inch K EFX crash with uh -huh. a was it a K light maybe? Yeah, it could be a K light. Uh, yeah, the K light at the bottom. Kind of mm -hmm. gave it like a more washy sound because the 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 EFX top was, you know, with the hose in it, it the sound would really travel up. So, mm -hmm. and then I love how drummers are reversing it too, flipping like them, yeah, them, like they're flipping them because yeah, then you can mic it from the bottom and you still get the the sound, but then people it's mysterious because you're looking at that top and you're like, how is it getting that that deep wash sound, that trashy sound, but at the same time got the snap? Yes, so it's, it's just physics, you know, but hey. I don't, so good. I don't it's know ex I don't experimenting, know right? <laughs> experimenting. That's what yeah. it is. Experimenting. Just sitting with it and trying. I love it. Stuff. Yeah. Not, and now. Not, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no 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 no. Go ahead. No. I, no. No. Well, <laughs> I was just gonna say. And now we get to work together on Absolutely. new um, products and sounds through GrooveX Percussion. I love that. And oh, um, I love it. Yeah, every time we have something else on the horizon, I, I it's so great to get the product out to you because, oh, yeah, there you go. There's the X click. Um, oh, my God. This is so amazing. It's great, right? So, yeah. yeah so we'll just we'll do a little plug for Groove X Percussion because the, the products so far that have come out have been super cool. And the thing I love about the company and about Russ is um, being able to, like, create a product that really adds to sound options. Like that's always Absolutely. been my thing is, you know, sound. I loved spending time with all the artists picking their cymbal sounds because I, in my opinion, cymbals are, you know, that's like the key sound that comes through in a lot of, in most cases, you know, that's a very Absolutely. signature personal sound. But um, these products are awesome. Like you just held up that X click um the cross stick sound in your snare and then the the um the x mag sizzle that just came out um which i'm so excited about because it's a got it hanging you know, back here yeah there you go <laughs> it's a magnetic washer that goes right on your on your symbol and it like allows you, you put to it on it. a music stand that's what i love it was like you know you stick you know, it right there wanna, right hey look if you don't need it for the symbol for that one song it's like oh okay no this is not that that song that needs to sizzle so good, right there, but then you could just be like, Ooh, I'm gonna put it on the it's like, boom, Next right? You know. And that's there a pretty go. dry symbol. And, and the fact that it has the tambourine attachment and the the mm -hmm. just the variety of different symbols from light to medium to heavy man, it's such a brilliant design because being metallic, you can put the any of the other sizzles on top, and so you can get as minimal sizzle to as heavy of a sizzle as you want. That's yes. Great. Yeah, exactly. That that yeah. was um the the idea actually came from Sammy Marandino. Okay. And I don't know if you know Sammy. He's um he does a lot of like Broadway shows oh. in the city and and uh that came from him. That's the other thing I have to just say that I love about working with Ross and Groovex is talking with you all about ideas and then seeing them come to life for the first time. That's just like so so fun. 
yeah, that's what it takes, all of us. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for for playing that stuff. And and again, like, you know, you're always you've always been an artist who just like sound wise, you're always experimenting and pushing the boundaries and coming up with new things and new ideas. And I just love that so much. Yeah, I just, honestly, I just get bored. And uh, and I feel like I'm not pushing or I get used to when I've been playing the same drum kit for too long. Then I'll, I can pretty much pre. Uh, like, I don't know, like. Like my idea of when I sit down with the kid is way too comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so I, in a way, I know what I'm getting ready to play because my muscle memory, according to that kid, has already been established. Right. And, 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 and in a way, that's what you look for, because it's that comfortable zone where you know how to how to act and react to different things that's going to show up. Yeah. So but, you know, I start to miss that edge of like, ooh, OK, you know, because I used to play my cymbals super low and mm -hmm. I knew what that was. And then I just I was like, you know what? That's too comfortable. I know what that's going to be. I know I'm going to go to this particular sound, this particular thing to respond this way. And so yeah. I was just like, you know what? Let's raise them up. And that changed a whole different observation of like, OK, or just different physical comfortability sitting behind the kit because you had to, you know, my arms wasn't used to being raised like that. And so I, mm -hmm. I had to knew I meant it to go to the symbol. So that allowed for more tonal things to happen around the kit. And, and just the approach too, like when I would lean into the symbol and then different things that I could do because the symbol was higher, the way I could move around the kit. So I'm constantly just trying different things, you know, lowering lowering the floor time or keeping the floor time high, you know, tightening the snare, keeping the snare low, right. you know, all that. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. You know, whatever. And that, that fits right into, you know, what we've been talking about with, um, with pushing yourself out of what's comfortable in order to grow. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Um, and are you finding as far as like inspiration and creativity besides changing things up physically, is there anything else that you do to get yourself in a new headspace? Well, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate. I have a, a wonderful recording studio in, in Chelsea and in Manhattan on 29th street. And, um, we have a recording label. So getting a chance to be out of my headspace. Uh, and work with other artists and engineers and producers and, and focus on different content. That's something that really also helps me uh, because, you know, it's no fun just living in your world. Like you, it's, it's, it's more fun to, in a, to be in the world of others. Mm -hmm. And, um, and y'all can share information because everybody helps each other out because, you know, I, I love a, a great quote um, that I heard before. And um, I remember this guru said he was just like, you know, you know, he has some knowledge, she has some knowledge, they have some knowledge, you know, and just moving it around is that, you know, everybody has something to offer mm -hmm. uh, to what this is. And um, and so musically for me, that it just made so much sense. So I would spend my time listening. And so, you know, we would be in the recording studio and I would listen to, you know, one of my head engineers and he would just be producing this track for an artist I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. And then I was sitting there and I was like, man, that's kind of hip. I like that. And then it would inspire me because then I would try to, you know, recreate these digital sounds on the drum kit and just try to find different inspirations to try to, if I wanted to be able to achieve that sound live, like what physical components would I need without necessarily having to use a drum pad. But also, mm -hmm. you know, you know, there's no harm in using a drum pad. Mm -hmm. um, and I, Another good plug for some good friends I just met recently, uh, the Sunhouse Percussion Department that have, you know, created these, you know, electronic brackets that can can take live drums and make them sound electronic. It's like it's yes. so much, so much invention that's happening out here. Right. That's allowing the your creativity to ex expand even more and more and more and more. So those are the things that's really been helping me, like, you know, keeping me out of my own bubble and and just kind of thinking you know, in the past, like I, mm -hmm. I love the past, but you know, sometimes you can get caught up in the past and then you try to use the past to, uh, you know, to argue the future. It's like, well, you don't know what we did. 
back here. You know, it's like, yeah. y'all need to change your stuff, you know. <laughs> you need to learn <laughs> legacy, you know. And I, you know, I just never really wanted to be that dude. Like, I was just like, ah, it's cool, you know. Yeah, I'm curious about the next generation and the things that they're introducing. And, and yes, I could be that cat, you know, it's just like, you don't know your history. Hey. But, <laughs> but, you know, Getting, yeah, you know, I I definitely I definitely see you as someone who embraces um what's next, who embraces yeah. embraces how things are changing and um and you always know who who's coming up and what's happening and um and that's that's perfect. <laughs> I think that's that's how you could be because if you know you get you kind of get stuck, I think, if if you don't embrace that and um, all the, all the drummers that we know, all of the ones who are, you know, even like Steve Gadd still says that he's, he's evolving and Dennis and, you know, that they are taking things from what's happening now and, um, That's true. learning like, like they don't stop learning. And so I just think it's, that's so smart. Yeah. It's fine. You know? And fun, fun and fun, right? Yeah, and fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't do it if it wasn't fun. Right. I know, right? We, we make it sound like it's a curriculum. We're like, you gotta <laughs> learn. You know, trust me. I've hung out with Dennis, and, you know, that's a great story where we were both in uh, Bayerischerhof in, um, in Munich, Germany. And uh, we were in the hotel lobby, you know, just chatting it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got on the, on the, you know, of course, you know, the favorite topic of Dennis is, is you know, who was the one, Billy Cobham or Tony Williams? And I was like, oh boy, here we go, here we go. And so, of course, you know, he went up, got his computer and his hard drive. Yes, and he and has then, videos oh and, every, you know, what? Dennis is like a wealth, right, of all of that stuff. Oh, my, we stayed up, I swear to like, we started maybe around like 1030. Mm -hmm. We, next thing I knew, we was in that lobby to about six a.m. and we both had an early lobby call i mean early, i say early like seven or whatever but we it was so fascinating to see the variety of things that had happened and then you know of course i'm getting to sit next to dennis you know someone that has influenced me over the years like mm -hmm. you know me and chris day would just sit and listen to that blue matter record like over and over again and then you know end of the spirit i don't know if people even know that album that it was like one of the first albums I ever heard Dennis play swing on with Chick Corea mm, mm -hmm. and Bob Berg. I was sitting there like, yo, this dude is killing. <laughs> and so, you know, it was such an inspiration. And so, I, you know, we just talked and, it, oh, uh, you know, yeah. I, I just hope that experience for me is something that's been encouraging as, as well as like one of the first times I met Greg Hutchison. Mm -hmm. And I, I was 16 years old and I was scared to to sit in at a jam session and he was already playing with Raw Hargrove and, and Greg was like, boy, if you don't get your crack up here and play, you know, and I was like, okay, yes, sir. Ah. You know? And um, it was things like that, that really motivated me. And I don't feel like I would be here today if it wasn't for those guys, it wasn't for them pushing me in a certain way, giving me the information that they passed down. And so I make that something that's very important to me now. Like, I, you know, I'm always encouraging young drummers, man, get your stuff together, you know, Go ahead mm -hmm. and record the record. Don't worry if it's not the best record on the planet right now. You got to think about the loan game. You got to, you know, get your content mm -hmm. out there, get your name to be seen. And then, you know, because one thing people do like, they're going to judge you no matter what. But what they do like is to see the growth and the evolution and seeing what you're doing with your career. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, because then you get the fan base that they're growing with you. They're like, "Ooh, I remember you when you was, man, you just yes. keep doing the thing, you know. And it's, 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 it's contagious. It inspires them and they want to do more. They want to keep trying different things because you can try different things, but if you're not inspired to, then it just feels laborious. Then you mm -hmm. sit there like, oh, here's another day. <laughs> yeah. So you don't want that. Yeah. No, you know, no, coffee because your tea. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> feels like a coffee. Some days, day. some days, you know, Hopefully mm -hmm. they're rare, but some days can be like that. But, but like, I think, and I would always remind myself of this too. Um, even, even in, on a tough day, like it's music, you know, Absolutely. like how, how amazing is it to be creating and to have, you know, like 
to have it appreciated, to have what you're creating appreciated. And, Absolutely. Um, you know, it's just, it's such an incredible thing. And, um, but yeah, I, the same, same situation with speaking with people like Dennis and, and Steve Gadd and, and, um, and Greg Hutchinson, who might be one of the nicest Oh yeah, you know, absolutely. Guys, and you know, all nice, like, crazy, all, all of the above. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it though. You know, he's authentic. We love him. We love, we love him. I mean, yeah. cr so creative. Um, yeah. but like, I just, I just, um, the the passion and the energy, and you know, you think like you think some people could just be resting on what they've created already, but they're not. You know, absolutely. they're in it, and so motivated and and you know just like like uh you know passionate the passion come a passion comes out and um everyone you know wants to share with each other and i Absolutely. i just i love i love that part about this industry and drummers in general the the family community aspect of it it's just it's beautiful yeah and you know and keeping everybody honest, because the one thing about the drum community is that we don't lie. No, know? it's like if it's That's if true. it's not happening, yeah, you know, you know, cats will not hesitate to give you the cold shoulder. Yeah, and just kind of be like, mm, yeah. you got to get that. You got to work on that one, or you know, give that little whisper in the ears, like, yo, man, don't solo so much. You know, kind yeah, of, you know, yeah. hold it, hold it down for the band. You know? Right, well, right. You know, Sometimes there's some tough love aspect to it yeah, too. Some but, tough love, and yeah. you gotta love it. That's the only way you get better because, it, you know, in, in young passion, you want to show everything you got because you want to be, you know, you 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 know that you got something. Mm -hmm. It's just undirected, right? It's like a, right. You know, imagine like, like you know, like a, a director of photography filming all of the information for a film, but there's no director. Man, that right. would be all over the place, like. The scenes, you don't know where the scenes end, where they stop. It would just stuff just be showing up. You know, it'd be some just background footage. You'd be like, I don't think that belongs there. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so, but, you right. know, that it's the great thing about like the mentorship, though, you know. Exactly. So there's always like, there's always a group who will help you if you're kind of like heading in the wrong direction or readjust. Yeah. I can't even tell you how many times. Um, and just, I know we keep bringing up Dennis, but. I would call Dennis and be like, Hey, can you call so-and-so and give them a little bit of direction? <laughs> like, and not about playing, but about, but about yeah. how, how things work and, you know, exactly. how to, how to navigate this industry. And, um, and you know, Dennis, like he was, that was, that's, he's like the godfather in that way. And yeah. there are, there are the, the others out there who are, who are, that who take on that role and and now it's you know it's the eric harlins of the world and i always yeah. i always tell aaron spears too i'm like yeah it's it's your time now you know it's yeah. um and and you know bringing bringing the next generation um into into the light with the with that stuff too so um yeah, yeah. and in and, and again like embracing the change and you all are are amazing Absolutely. with with that stuff as well. And, um, and I don't want to forget but to mention like what you're up to moving forward too, because you have some great stuff coming up. One I saw was a, um, a festival that's coming up in May. Yeah. Right. And yeah. the, the ground up music festival in Miami, which I'm like, I would love to go to Miami in May. The lineup is incredible. Yeah, come on down. Come it's on so down. good. I might just have to go to Miami in May. But I, I have to ask you. So you're listed on, and the line, the lineup is just, it really is amazing. And you're listed as the artist at large. So I have to ask. Yeah. What, what does that entail? Well, I mean, the way Michael League, so it's it's a snarky, pretty much the Snarky Puppy Festival, but you know, Ground Up is their music label, and mm -hmm. they have a lot of artists under that label. I was actually very surprised when he called me, cause he called me one day and I was, I thought he was calling me to maybe do a session or something. And mm -hmm. I was like, Oh man, Mike, you know, cause we talk a lot. And, um, so he was like, yeah, man, you know, just wanted to throw this out there. And, uh, he's like, you know, are you willing to be the, the artist at large, which is the artist, pretty much the artist in residence at this mm -hmm. festival. 
And I was like, huh? And I was like, man, you sure you got the right number? You know, we just yeah. <laughs> jived a little bit. You know, it was pretty, pretty hilarious. And um, but what that does entail, it's just for the three days, I'm just gonna be visible. We'll figure out the different components. Like I'll probably mm -hmm. be doing a bunch of interviews. Like I know I'm definitely set to do, you know, my actual real show on that Saturday. But, you know, the Friday and the Sunday and also throughout the day and the Saturday, like I'll just be making rounds. I'll be sitting in with different bands. Um, they know me like I'm just I'm just always moving around. Like I, I'll just jump on somebody's floor time if they're playing it or you yes. know, if another group is going like it's just. You know, I'm, I just want to be in the vibe. I just want to be in the, in the mix and and everybody that's on the lineup are, are really, really good and dear friends. Mm -hmm. So it makes it more like even a family atmosphere. And, uh, and Michael Lee told me, he was just like, man, you should imagine that this is your festival. And I was like, oh, oh. I love that. Like, How great. Uh, too much pressure. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What should I do? I don't know what I do with my You're like the ambassador. I like that. I, you know, I hate to call yeah. it because, I mean, you know, because I mean, these, I mean, you know, a lot of them are young, but they, they are making such a name for themselves and they've created such a, you know, bountiful. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and yeah, just for lack of a better word, just um, simply amazing music and creating their own voice and then moving into their own thing, have been their own thing. Right. And uh, but maintain a sense of just being wonderful people at the same time. So it, it should be a good time. I'm also going to be, you know, playing, you know, like I said, playing with a few other groups as well. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty organic. I, I love, you know, that whole ground up music organization have, have been some really, really good dear friends, one of the, the main guys that run it is a guy named Eric Lance, who's also the vice president for CSEC uh, Publishing. And and I'm also with CSEC Publishing. So it's like, there's that component. And um, yeah, it's, it's just so many great people that make that work. Yes. And, you know, and we have a lot of great conversations and we reach out to one another. It's, it's just such a wonderful, harmonious thing. And it's no wonder why they have so much success that's mm -hmm. just snarky puppy in general absolutely um, yeah they're just beautiful people that's a great All community of, oh great community awesome you know that's why well i will mm -hmm. i'll definitely um put a link to that in case anyone's interested i mean miami in may sounds wonderful so head on down or head over on. to Come miami on. <laughs> on. and tickets are limited because you know even though it's a festival mm -hmm. uh I mean, by then, you know, hope. I mean, well, Florida, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's like the COVID thing. We, we don't really know what's happening there, but uh, right, I know right. they like to have a limited amount of people. So I already know tickets are, are popping. So, mm -hmm. you know, I bet. Yeah. People should make sure to, to get down there, especially with that lineup. It's, it's oh, man. Yeah. It's killer. Yes. Yeah. And I don't want to like list everyone off because I'll, I'll miss people. Cause it's, but it's, it's an amazing lineup. So go check. Go yeah. check the uh, the link that I'll that I'll post and um, and also um, I want to make sure to talk about your drum loops and samples um, with Yurt Rock because you have two two different two, packages now, right? Yeah, two volumes now. Um, that's been great. Uh, we're working on the third one. I just you know I just have to go back and listen to all the various ones that I've done before because. Um, the company, you know, the CEO is Ryan Gruss. Uh, he also started Loop Loft. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was with him at the beginning of that, of Loop Loft. And we, we talked through the concept of, you know, getting various artists to, to come on board. And, and and so that worked out really well, so well that Native Instruments, you know, bought them out pretty much. Mm -hmm. they were like, yeah, we want to buy Loop Loft, too much competition. Mm -hmm. And then it was cool. Like, he was able to sit on that. And I felt really great for him because, you know, he had a vision and he saw it through and it really worked out for him. But, you know, then I, I feel like he just got bored again. So it was, it was weird. He hit me up. He was like, man, okay, I think I'm gonna start another company. And I was like, really? I was like, you just, <laughs> you just sold that one. You ain't cool with that. He's like, nah, man, I just want to keep, you know, having the music out there. And I was like, see mm -hmm. that I'll get on board. With. Yeah. And, um, and so he was like, yeah, we, you know, we'll call it your rock. And, you know, we just start a whole new, new loop franchise and um uh, and since he already knew how to do it from loop loft it just made sense and um uh, and mm -hmm. so it's been thriving you know nate smith is on there 
uh it's just so many wonderful artists you know wonderful drummers you know y'all should really check it out uh but yeah i've I've done two volumes already and then um i'm just preparing to see what's going to be next for the volume three uh i've got some other good friends on board just to give a, a more production aspect for people that are looking for loop production not just necessarily like drum loops mm -hmm. um because I'm, I'm thinking about the, the younger generation that pretty much hasn't had the opportunity to be in a production studio and to hear like a really thoroughly produced track and then mm -hmm. have that kind of like not kind of like but actually uh micro dosed into samples so that they can use the creative aspect in that way you know that the sound that you're getting is top-notch sound mm -hmm. but then you can mess with your creative mind and and combine different aspects of the samples that you're hearing to create the song that best mm -hmm. supports you so it, it ultimately you know they're royalty free samples so they pretty much end up becoming your song and you can use them and and twerk them in any way or tweak them I shouldn't say twerk but tweak them <laughs> in any way i know right yes yeah we'll absolutely yeah. but tweak them in, in any way that really um you know that feels you know that works for them right that works for them exactly yeah yeah and i i mean i'm just thinking about how you just mentioned that you have the sun house products now so i could imagine those being like incorporated into your your new I've been, yeah, I've been wanting to work with them for a minute. I just mm. hadn't had the time to really get over there. And um, yeah. and then I, I couldn't, honestly, I I wasn't sure if that was the sound I was going for, to be mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, me and Chris Day, we grew up together. And we always have this thing about, you know, cheating, right? Yeah. Meaning that, you know, <laughs> once you once you go that route with electronics, it's like, ah, you're not, you're not putting in the discipline to get that sound authentically. And we we pretty much held each other to that creed, so, so mm -hmm. you know, but that's why we would mess around with as many different sounds as possible, yeah, just so that we could achieve that sound, you know, through you know whatever mic placement or something like that, just to, or right. even if it's just live without mics, you know, you got to be able to achieve that sound whether you tighten the snare drum super high, yeah, or you know you play the top of a rim of a different drum that's just that sounds mm -hmm. like it's one of those, you know those digital snares that would go with like an 808 bass drum or something like that. So yeah, like, absolutely. Well, I do, I, I can't say what it is, but, but GrooveX, another, another little <laughs> plug for GrooveX percussion. There's some things coming, um, oh, okay. sound, sound wise that, okay. you know, acoustic accessories for, for the drums that are, are go going to give some more, um, sound options. So I'm psyched okay. about that. I cannot wait. As soon as possible, I'll get, I'll get you uh, something to check out. But, oh, um, uh, but yeah, I'm into that totally. But, but yeah, just... sound. I, I guess I'm sorry. I just wanted to say mm -hmm. so it doesn't sound like I, I'm into Soundhouse. But what drove me to them is that I'm working on this project with Taylor Ixty. That's you know we're going to film it in March, and it's called Imagine Our Future uh, uh, with the great Lisa Fisher. She's going to be singing on it, mm -hmm. as well as uh, uh, like. A bunch of other amazing artists but the whole concept was uh originally i think kendrick scott was supposed to do it and he came up with the idea of pretty much tonally matching the tunes using the sun house uh clamps mm, you know okay to, to pretty much pre-program the songs according to different drums and then that way as you know because the song will be the song but intermittently before and maybe after the song like segue like that can be a carryover where Taylor himself wouldn't have to hold down such a, like certain harmonic or chordal progressions. Like it could be something that can be achieved from the drum, mm -hmm. you know, almost like if you're in the studio and you want to keep like this, almost like a, your own separate mix, you know, right, or remix right. of what's mm -hmm. happening with the song. Uh, but Longus is in the same key. So it was like, okay, he was setting that up, but then, you know, now he's with the SF jazz collective. I'm, I'm happy about that because, you know, I like family being with family you know yes and um so uh when taylor asked me to do it i was like dude i definitely want to keep that concept and so i set up the meeting with sunhouse and uh we talked through the whole thing and now i'm getting apple involved just to to even use their database of sounds just to figure out what would be the best way to to make this work because the show is going to be in mountain view california which is pretty much you know 10 minutes from uh, uh from the apple headquarters so 
Mm-hmm. You know, it, it should be a fun thing. You know, that's it, it really already. Cool. I'm excited about it. I'm excited. Yeah, that sounds great. It's gonna be amazing. You you have some really fun, cool things coming up. Hey, you know, good. You know, as always, stuff for good people. You know, yeah. you know. <laughs> yes, that is the truth. That is the truth. Yes, absolutely. Um, Well, I just want to thank you so much for taking time today and catching up and sharing your insight and your inspiration. And I I really think you've inspired a lot of people with this talk. So thank you so, so much. Sarah, you family. Come on now. What? Forget (laughs) it. (laughs) Well, I can't wait till we can get back together in person, get a giant hug. That'll be like the best day. Indeed. Likewise, for sure. For sure. For sure. <laughs> and I'll I'll put a bunch of links in the description um, okay. and in the show notes on the podcast platform, so everyone can follow you and see what you're up to and get tickets to um, the Ground Up Music Festival and check out the things that you have on the horizon because super Indeed. cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, the, the social media stuff. You know, I'm, I'm I'm not as savvy with it. You know, I've been I've been trying to. You know, take some time, you know, do my due dil- diligence, but you know, take some time oh, away do. from it. Yeah, you I know, hear you. You know, you yeah, can get oversaturated with that thing. You and can absolutely, the- but but the stuff that you share is fantastic, Eric. And and the I- way that you, you know, you come on and sometimes you'll come on and do a little video and give some some thoughts. And I love yeah. that. Yeah, That's- keep doing that for sure. Oh, cool. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. All right. You take care, my friend. And you too. Um, I will see you soon, as soon as possible. Indeed, maybe likewise. maybe in Miami. Cool. <laughs> okay. All right. Take care, right. Eric. You too. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in today. Join us each Tuesday for new episodes of Sarah Hagen Backstage.